total was $6,000. Today is part three of the 2006 STI Hawkeye build. And as much as I wanna continue demodifying it and cleaning it up and replacing parts that are broken and missing, I need to get it running right. It came home with a check engine light on. Yes, that is a Subaru standard feature, especially when it's a multiple misfire code. Cylinder one and three on this car are misfiring. So we're gonna start with a set of plugs, see if that tidies it up a little bit. My guess is they probably haven't been done in a very long time. And I might have maybe a set of wheels sitting around the garage we can try on and a few other things. So gotta get started. As ridiculous as it sounds, I have been dreaming about this moment. Well, fantasizing for a very long time. These wheels. I purchased years ago and they might actually fit on this car. One of the reasons I bought this car was because I wanted something to put these wheels on. It's a big moment. Dissipation, frustration, they look huge. I don't care. I'll jack the car up, run it like a roller skate if I have to. Enki RCT fours, my all time favorite wheel. I kind of have a thing for them if you haven't noticed yet. We got a set of gold ones on the white RS and I got a set of white ones for the RS. And now I have these. I don't know if they're gonna fit though. Yeah, nah, look at those. Look how wide they are. There is no way. Oh man, look at that. Jeez, well. I know the car is jacked up, but I don't think so. These are 18 by nine and a halfs. I think plus 25, which I think is way too much for this car, but man, they're just beautiful, aren't they? To reach the passenger side spark plugs, you first have to remove the intake. So whatever intake is here needs to be removed. This, like the rest of the car is filthy dirty, so We'll probably clean this. Map sensor is already removed. The belt, those were loose from before. And I already got one of the spark plugs out. Let me show you. Check out the gap on the spark plug that just came out versus how it should be. Pretty wild, huh? I would say they're definitely due for a replacement. Driver side spark plugs are down in the abyss hither. So naturally, I did these last because I wanted to have some success. So now we have to remove the battery and then see what kind of junk we need to pull out of the way to get to the spark plugs. Well, that was already loose. World's largest T-handle extension with swivels just because that's how it was sitting in my toolbox. Oh, perfect. So long, friend. I'll never see you again. Uh, people still have these? Hey, that's pretty clean. I don't see any rust, just a bunch of dirt. 12 millimeter to loosen and remove the coil. Aha, there it is. Release yourself. One little clickety clack at a time. Remove coils, pull it out, it'll hit the frame rail, twist it like a certain amount of degrees, <laughs> and then pull it out. For the spark plugs, I'm using a 5 8 spark plug with the rubber piece inside socket and a short extension. This basically will get it into the head to the spark plug and leave just enough room to put on your ratchet. And just spin the uh, spark plug around a couple hundred times. Well, electric ratchet would probably be helpful right about now. Aha! This is the stupid position that's gonna make me sore tomorrow. In reverse order, you put the new spark plugs where the old spark plugs came out of. Cut the commercial.
mass airflow sensor looks pretty dirty so we're gonna clean it I am not a professional, but sometimes I do rely on professionals, especially when I do not have to pay for them. So the owner of the vehicle took it to a very well-known, reputable Subaru builder and repair shop in the area, had them do a full pre-purchase inspection uh, upon request of somebody who was looking at the car before me, which it worked out. I'm glad that they did that, but I was a little bummed that I didn't get to look at the car first. However, here's a list of things that a professional noted the car needed. OEM power steering rack fixing oil leaks from the transmission, axle seals, drain plug, fixing oil leaks from the turbo, return line and turbo supply line, valve cover gaskets with tube seals, labor associated with removing the timing and sprockets to replace cam seals, oil cooler o-ring leaking, labor associated with removing and installing the rear diff and resealing with axle seals, ball joints, OEM end links, shifter seal replacement, front strut mounts, and then it says rear axle. I don't know why, but total was $6,000. The person who looked at the car said, no thanks. Um, you gotta know buying cars like this, you're gonna need a lot of work. <laughs> One of these that's gonna um, be low mileage and flawless is gonna be super expensive. So I told the guy, I'll buy it as is, don't fix it. He wanted to just fix the car, paid the shop $6,000 and just have it, you know, tack it onto the purchase price. I said, no, 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 I will buy the car as is. We agreed to it. I got the car. So now I have a list of where to start, things to do. I have a feeling it might need a little bit more here and there. Um, he also did a compression test, which they said checked out good. I didn't get any proof of that and it's not on the original quote, so I don't know. We're just gonna have to take their word for it. Um, but this doesn't include the standard super features like misfire and a head gasket. So um, we're gonna get started on this list and it's gonna be, uh, I think it's probably gonna grow in size, but at least we got somewhere to start. Spark plugs are replaced. You have to put the battery back in, the air intake with the freshly cleaned MAF sensor and freshly cleaned and oiled air filter, and then see if we can reset the ECU and keep our fingers crossed, hopefully the misfire check engine light goes away. Just like that, I remembered the coils. They're not in there. They're supposed to be down there. So um, I'm gonna take the battery out again. This was just a practice run. So uh, glad I got extra practice for this. And you really gotta slow down and take your time because um, when you're doing things twice, it's really frustrating. Take two was a success. Spark plugs with coils are installed, batteries back in, now intake and ignition fire. There goes nothing. Okay, oh, door's locked. That does not sound good. That first second of initial startup sounds like straight metal on metal and it sounds terrible. I don't know what, it's got oil in it, it just sounds like I mean, it sounds like a gnarly metal on metal sound. Surprise, surprise, the new set of spark plugs did not solve the misfire problem. Well, cylinder one is still misfiring, so I switched the coil from cylinder three to cylinder one and the misfire code moved to cylinder three. So the next step is to replace all or at least that one coil. They're not cheap, so I think we're gonna go try to find one coil and put it in that cylinder and see if that solves the problem. Brand new coil from Subaru. These are about two months back ordered. So I called around a few local Subaru dealerships and about 30 miles away, there was one in stock. So rather than wait two months, I made the drive and picked it up. They're about 100 to 130 bucks a piece, depending on where you get them. Misfire code is gone. I drove it around the block a few times. It did not come back. We'll see, keep our fingers crossed. I hope it just stays away. So got a few things done, cleaned, sorted. Um, and at this point, I mean, we have a huge list of things to go through. I don't know where to start. You guys let me know. Oil leaks, tires, wheel, I don't know. Tell me what to do. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, comment. Thank you, bye.